Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look at ionization and penetration. So let's get started. So we're going to start by looking at ionization. We'll look at what it is and how each type of radiation can cause the ionization of an atom. So it says here that in a neutral atom, the number of orbiting electrons is the same as the number of protons in the nucleus. We've already seen this from the theory video on the atom. And for example, the atom below has two electrons and two protons, so is neutral. So in this picture, we've got two protons there and two electrons electrons on the outside, and so it's almost like two each if you were thinking about a football match, so we've got a neutral atom. What is ionisation? Well, ionisation is the addition or removal of an electron from a neutral atom to create an ion. So it's either adding an electron to a neutral atom or taking away an electron from a neutral atom, and this will leave behind something called an ion. Now, it depends on what you're doing, whether you're adding an electron or taking away an electron, as to whether you get a positive or a negative ion formed. So if an atom gains an electron, then this results in a negative ion. But if an atom loses an electron, then this results in a positive ion. And we can use these two pictures here to think about why this is. So let's say an electron is added to an atom. Then here's our picture from above, but just with our added electron. So we've now got two protons in the nucleus, but we've got three electrons around the outside. So this is now 3, 2 to the negative charge. So the atom will now be overall negative because we've now got more negative charges there than we do positive charges. So we can conclude that an atom with more electrons than protons is a negative ion. On the other hand though, if we look at removing an electron from a neutral atom, we've now got one electron rather than two electrons. So it's now 2, 1 to the positive protons. So the overall atom is now going to be positive, which forms a positive ion. So we can conclude that an atom with more protons than electrons is a positive ion. Moving on, it says that alpha, beta and gamma radiation are all types of ionising radiation. This means that they can cause ionisation, and this is why the types of radiation are pretty dangerous. When radiation passes through a material, it sometimes loses energy, which is passed on to the material. And if the material is living tissue, this gain of energy that it receives may cause the individual cells to be damaged, altered or even killed. So it's the idea of this ionising radiation depositing energy in the material that it's passing through, which can cause it to become damaged. We're now going to look at the ionising ability and the penetrating ability of the three types of nuclear radiation. So for alpha particles, first of all, it says here that alpha particles have a large mass compared to beta particles and gamma rays, we've seen that before, and therefore are the most ionising. So we can say that they pack the biggest punch, and that's because of their large mass. For this reason, when inside the body, alpha particles are thought to do the most damage to body tissue. So you don't want to get alpha radiation anywhere inside your body. However, we already know that alpha particles are stopped by a single sheet of paper, so they are the least penetrating and cannot pass through the skin. So if you're thinking about radiation inside the body, alpha is the most dangerous, but if it's outside the body, alpha is going to be the least dangerous because it can't get through your skin. How do alpha particles cause ionisation of an atom in the first place? Well, the positively charged alpha particle attracts a negatively charged orbiting electron away from an atom. So if we were to go back to the picture of our neutral atom, then we've got two electrons here, and let's say our alpha particle is passing close to this electron at the top, then it could actually attract it away from that atom, causing it, the atom to become ionised. And, and that's just due to a positive charge attracting a negative charge. Remember, opposites attract. Now looking at beta particles, it says here that beta particles are more ionising than gamma rays, but less ionising than alpha particles. So in terms of ionisation, they're pretty much the middleman in terms of the three types of radiation. They can penetrate the skin, but cannot penetrate the whole body like gamma rays. So beta particles, when outside the body, can be quite dangerous just because they can get through your skin, but they cannot penetrate the whole body, so they might get through your skin to some other tissues. So in terms of penetration as well, they're also kind of like the middleman because they're not as penetrating as gamma rays, but they are more penetrating than alpha particles. How do beta particles cause ionisation of an atom? Well, a negatively charged beta particle repels a negatively charged orbiting electron away from an atom. So if we go back to our picture of the neutral atom, imagine you've got a negatively charged beta particle close to this electron up here, for example. And remember, the beta particle is just an electron. So an electron near another electron can actually repel that electron away from that orbital in the atom. So that then will ionise this atom. Lastly, we'll look at gamma rays. So it says that although gamma rays are the least ionising, 
they're the most penetrating and we've seen that before and so they are considered to be the most dangerous when thinking about radiation outside of the body. This is because they can easily penetrate body tissue. So it's important to remember that gamma rays are the least ionizing but the most penetrating. But if you had gamma rays inside the body, they wouldn't be thought to be very dangerous because they're not very ionizing. How do gamma rays cause ionization of an atom? Well, it says that a gamma ray is absorbed by an atom and gives its energy to one of the orbiting electrons. The electron then has enough energy to leave the atom. So if we go back to our picture of the neutral atom, let's say this atom absorbs a gamma ray, then it's going to have more energy and it can give that energy to one of its orbiting electrons. And let's just say, for example, it was this top one, then this electron might have enough energy now to leave the energy level that it's in in this atom and be emitted from the atom. Just to summarize the ionizing and penetrating ability then for the three types of radiation. So for alpha particles, first of all, we saw they have a high ionizing ability. They cause the most ionization but they have a low penetrating ability because they're stopped by a single sheet of paper. So they're the most ionizing but the least penetrating. Beta particles though have a medium ionizing ability and a medium penetrating ability and that's because they're roughly the middleman when thinking about ionizing and penetrating ability. And lastly, gamma has a low ionizing ability but a high penetrating ability. So gamma rays cause the least ionization but they can penetrate the most through materials. So hopefully you can see a kind of pattern here. Think about beta as being medium and medium, alpha as being high then low, and gamma as being low then high. So this is really important for you to remember for the exam. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.